Welcome to this fourth reading of the catalogue essay that accompanies the exhibition at Mars Gallery in Windsor, Melbourne, an exhibition that is an homage to the life and work of Danila Vasiliev. Both the exhibition and the essay are titled A Letter to Danila, What You Hoped For Through Your Lifetime. This is where the point I'd reached yesterday in my reading. I decided to assemble each one around an image of one of your paintings, chosen at random from a selection of your work ranging from the 1930s to the 1950s. But how would I begin? That's where I ended yesterday and now my reading of the essay continues. I didn't presume to apply a specific methodology because I wanted to allow the process to define itself. I decided I would begin by tracing the energetic reach of one of your painterly narratives onto the surface of, of one of my previously archived works, not attempting to achieve any visual equivalence with your work or to re-engage with my own but simply seeking to somehow entwine one with the other. The appearance of this word surprised me, but it appeared spontaneously and I followed its prompting. And just how might I select from my arch archive the paintings I would use as platforms for each of the homages? The premise that defined the selection process was this one. I have never believed that any of my works were ever fully completed. I consider them as simply having been paused at a particular moment of their gestation. And if a certain amount of time passes beyond that moment, the journey simply becomes too difficult to resume. Consequently, the completion status of any of my archived works is defined by whether through the passing of time they've become too difficult to awaken, to resume. And so some are simply in a state of rest, awaiting either a radical repurposing or the resumption of their journey towards permanent rest. I consider that in either case, they're perhaps awaiting a kind of resurrection. It became a matter of identifying which works were temporarily paused or conversely, which ones had by now passed the moment of potential resumption of their journey, having achieved the permanent state of quietude, an ongoing solitary and still solitude, which can never be disturbed. In searching through my archives, I came across a number of works that were still alive in this way and were therefore open to repurposing available to be transmuted into an homage to your life and work. But Danila, I'm under no illusion that any of this is conclusive. I have simply chosen to believe it through the past year or so as comforting sustenance. I must tell you something else which may or may not be relevant to you. In 2009, I worked on another homage project titled More is You Thrillo, in which I attempted to understand the chasm between Maurice Utrillo's inner life, torn apart as it was by alcoholism, social rejection and mental illness, and the colourful representations he painted until his death of the streets and architecture of his beloved Montmartre. The serene images Utrillo made were in direct contradiction to his inner turmoil and perhaps constituted a reprieve from his suffering. Whereas your images depict, and pardon me for simply assuming this, they depict the ongoing alignment between the outer world and your innermost feelings, ultimately manifesting as visual imagery. So the difference, and I needed to understand this, between what moved you to make your paintings 
and what moved Mauricio Trillo to paint his street scenes was this. His paintings of Montmartre served to conceal his inner turmoil, whereas your paintings of Fitzroy and later of your Murray River dreamscapes were made in order to reveal both your own sense of this location, even torment, and that of each of the characters you depicted. In an attempt to further clarify for myself the paradoxical relationship between Utrillo's psychology and the making of his paintings, once I had completed my version of his Montmartre streetscapes, I carefully scraped all the coloured oil paint off each surface, removing what I proposed was simply the obfuscation of terror, of the terror that lay inarticulately beneath. This action, I then supposed, might finally reveal the endlessly grey monochromatic patchwork substrata of the artist's inner turmoil, which had been concealed by the paint's obfuscation. Perhaps I reasoned, revealing the oppressively thick emotional fog that had beset him from his infancy right to the end of his life. I varnished this grey patchwork version of his streetscapes over and over again in an attempt to preserve what to me seemed to be precious evidence of the artist's lifelong suffering, now no longer concealed by coloured paint. I've read somewhere, or perhaps have imagined it, that your favourite book of the New Testament in the Russian Synodal Bible is St John's Book of Revelation, in which at each turn substance is privileged over appearance. So, to clarify, the homages acknowledging and celebrating your life and art have manifested as entwinings, each comprising both a reference to one of your paintings, whether visual or substantive, and one of or more of my previously archived works, now resurrected as the platform around which each homage unfolds and entwines, much like a Dionysian vine. Finally, as I looked around the studio one afternoon, contemplating the totality of the entwinings, I understood how deeply each one existed as a singularity, manifesting itself unequivocally within its own energetic field, vastly different both in appearance and feel from any of the others. Paradoxically, after a time, I began to sense that the sum of all eight entwinings itself exists as a singularity, composed of a number of separate parts animating a single body, whose sole focus and intent is to pay homage to your life and work. How many selves have contributed to this single homage? The anxiety that suddenly arises in me as I ask myself that question has beset me for the whole of my life generated by my disinterest in maintaining any visual consistency in the forms that seem to have manifested through each of my projects. At times I've gone into my studio very late at night, deciding to make an unexpected visit, almost as if I might in this way surprise the collection of components that I imagined had decided in my absence to assemble themselves into other kinds of forms foreign to me, obeying vastly different rules towards an entirely different outcome. But no, all always seemed to be as I'd left it earlier that day. Gradually, though, my response to what was in front of me became one of genuine surprise, bewilderment even. What were these strangely awkward creatures doing in my studio? And who was responsible for their existence, for their unappealing nature. That's where I'll leave it today. Thanks for your focus on what I'm saying and I'll say more tomorrow.